Bruce Springsteen Live provides fans with an intimate look into Springsteen's creative process. The Bruce Springsteen Live exhibit opens at the Woody Guthrie Center on Saturday, April 16th, running through Sunday, September 25th. The exhibit will feature iconic artifacts, live performance footage, instruments, stage costumes, exclusive interviews, concert posters, and photography, as well as unique interactive displays to immerse fans in Bruce Springsteen and the band's creative process. More information can be found at WoodyGuthrieCenter.org. Please let them know that Setless and Bruce sent you there, and I'll see you in Tulsa. If you went to multiple shows on the same tour, at least 50% of the set list would probably be the same because they're going to have their songs that people expect to hear. You know, your Master of Puppets, your Enter Sandmans, and the like. For this, we really had no idea what to expect. All they were saying was expect surprises. There, That was definitely the case. What was really cool is... Both shows were different set lists. Mm -hmm. So what they did is the first show, they did at least one song from each one of their studio albums in sequential order of the album's release. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Set Lessing Bruce, your podcast all about Bruce Springsteen, his music, and mostly his fans. I am your host, Jesse Jackson, and joining us today, though I don't think we'll talk a lot of Bruce, but we all, he always does come up, is my good friend and fellow podcaster, Rachel. Rachel, welcome back to the show. Hello. So, how you been doing? <clears throat> Uh, not bad, not bad. It's uh, I live in the Midwest and it's winter, so you know, uh, uh, two yeah. plus two equals snow. Yes, um, <laughs> we're in Dallas. I'm in Dallas, and so we've had a couple of days of, you know, like currently it's thirty, uh, but it is sunny, and so it's supposed to get over freezing later this morning. Uh, so everything should get back to normal this afternoon. But for the past couple of days, everyone's been kind of huddled in the house. So I made gumbo, so it wasn't bad. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for someone who has not uh, listened to your earlier episode, tell us a little about yourself. Well, I am what I like to call a professional nerd. Um, I uh, am on several I, podcasts <laughs> along with the I don't know how many I've guested on at this point talking about various topics um you know I like a, a lot of the the big fandoms Marvel Star Wars uh that sort of thing I cosplay um I spend way too much time on TikTok and yes I do have a going streak on Wordle Oh, good for you. I just recently <laughs> discovered Wordle and I, I, I enjoy it. I know now then there's a little bit of hate because the New York Times bought them, which mm -hmm. I say, good, good for him if he can make the money. Yeah. Um, and one of my one of my best followers, just so supportive, said, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but I don't give a damn about your Wordle score. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I get it, but it's just so easy just to share. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. just to see, oh, I did crappy today or I did good today. Um, so two, your two main podcasts mm -hmm. are the Fanish Five Girls, right? Five is Fangirls. Five is Fangirls. And then uh, <laughs> your Oscars podcast, right? The gold Standard, would, the Oscars yeah. podcast. Would those yeah. be your two biggest, do you think? Well, I would say so. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. would hope so. Yeah. Uh, I'm on them. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, Rachel, before uh, we're going to talk Metallica, you were on before mm -hmm. and you told us a great story about how you went from, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm marrying a guy who loves Metallica to you lapping him and now going, come on, let's go. Um, 
but anything on your geek radar that you've really been enjoying lately? Um, well, kind of pseudo, kind of related. And I, I told this story uh, uh, on uh, one of the most recent episodes of the Fight Fangirls where we talk about um, the Get Back docuseries that Peter Jackson did with the Beatles. Um, and because of that, what my husband Chauncey did to me with Metallica, I have now done to him with the Beatles. Where he was really? like, yeah, whatever. That's a thing that you like. You know, I know some of the, you know, like the most popular songs. Sure. To now he is like, oh my God, give me everything Beatle related. <laughs> and let me consume it. That's nice. <laughs> so between the two of us, we have, you know, like the greatest metal band of all time covered. And then the yes. just greatest rock and roll band of all time covered. The student has become the master. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah. very yeah. nice. I have not got to see the documentary yet. Just haven't taken the time. I know it's amazing. Oh, yes. It's so uh, good. Yeah. I just, um, for not genre related, but just I happen to be, I'm caught up on everything on my DVR. And I'd planned to go watch Lost in Space the final season, but the new Reacher series. Uh, dropped and i i watched the first episode oh i wonder what this is like and i ended up liking it it is mindless entertainment it's just <laughs> um it's just hawk from the titans beating up people the whole episode but it's just so cool it's it just it really is a good it has been a a really fun kind of change of pace series so yeah i don't i think i mentioned this before i don't really watch a lot of television right um especially live tv uh -huh. um part of that is because i don't technically have a television i have a giant screen with a like roku type box attached okay. to it so yeah. and then a, like a digital antenna which the wind has to be blowing the right direction and the you know barometric pressure has to be an exact for any signal to come in uh so <laughs> there's not a lot of live tv going on around here to begin with so we really have to rely on things like day after on hulu yes um, and things like that so like i'm missing all of the olympic coverage which is kind of hurting my heart a little because i can't yeah. get nbc to come in oh no and you got to pay and all the all the on peacock all of yes. the olympic stuff is premium it's not part of the free peacock ah okay so Accounts. yeah so, that makes sense yeah, that that's really they're not <laughs> bad businessmen yes i get that um it's luckily, the olympics i know uh <laughs> my son um is a huge uh wwe fan so mm -hmm. he paid for the premium of peacock uh, because he was paying wwe when they had a you know subscription channel so he just switched it over to Peacock. And so he said, okay, since you, I use your Amazon Prime, I use your Netflix, I use your Apple TV, I got mm -hmm. this one, Pops. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. I, you did remind me, though, my growing up, my grandparents lived in a uh, rural area. Uh, he was a dairy farmer. And uh, they had... Um, a device on the TV that you turned it and it rotated the antenna on the roof oh, so really? that you could try <laughs> to get the better signal. Like yeah. instead of it just being standard, you could move it and like, oh, now then the uh, NBC affiliate in Alexandria, Louisiana, oh, it's coming up better than, you know, the CBS channel that was in Beaumont, Texas. Um, yeah. I think One it's just the nature of the the beast nowadays because all of the major networks have their own streaming. Right. So it's like, why give it to you for free when you can pay us yes. for it? Yes, absolutely. So. Yeah. Um, so uh, you talked about and and you said that, you know, when you reached out to me and said, hey, I booked again. I'm like, oh, great. What are we going to talk about? And so you said... You've got an update on y'all's Metallica journey. Talk to me a mm -hmm. little bit. As I mentioned when I was last on, you know, talking about the, my previous 
uh, adventures going to see Metallica. And I mentioned that the, we had another one coming up. Um, and that was the big Metallica 40th anniversary uh, concerts once again in San Francisco at the Chase Center. So we were uh, going to the same venue that we had before, uh, which was nice because the learning curve lot less steep there um and it was really cool because uh while the snm2 stuff was really awesome um and that was kind of the chase center's way of like in not you know christening their new facility because it was a, a brand their brand new basketball stadium at the time um and then obviously the pandemic hit not long <laughs> after yeah. that like six months later everything is shut down so like metallica is not touring and everything this time it was the city of san francisco really acknowledging that metallica considers that their home city you know even though the guys are from their own places um they consider san francisco kind of their their home turf uh so when we got there uh, we did a travel package through Metallica, so that included our concert tickets, uh, a hotel room, and uh, a couple of really nice uh, concert posters um, that are currently off getting custom framed at the moment. Nice. Um, <clears throat> yes, so they're going to be look really cool when they're when they're done in a, in a couple weeks. Um, and so it just made kind of made things easier because we we knew where we were going to stay um and a lot of the fans were staying at the same hotel as this marriott um it, about a mile and a half away from the chase center um it's like fourth street and mission and if you if you know the san francisco area so we were nicely located, a lot of restaurants um, right near the movie theater. So we went and saw Spider-Man No Way Home oh, <laughs> while nice. we were there. So that was really cool. But just kind of everywhere you went, it was just, it wasn't like over the top, but you know how like, um, you know, since you're in a, a major city, whenever there's like a big sporting event, like here in Indianapolis, when we host like, uh, we hosted like the final four, but we also do the big 10 tournament yeah. um and you know any major city when something like that is going on you drive around and usually on the uh street lights will have like those big banners um usually indicating whatever event is going on and they were doing that for metallica they had all these these banners on the street lamps you know it's oh, like metallica cool. with the logo and everything um so they were you know it was really cool they were acknowledging it and of course you know fans walking around lots lots of metallica shirts um yeah. Chauncey and i had a lot of fun you know figuring watching certain designs walk by and he's like oh that's from like you know the late 80s like you know that shirt's like vintage or you know somebody's nice. got a, a tour shirt on from a show that he's like oh that's from whatever they were doing they had the two shows which i'll, I'll talk about yeah. uh, but they were doing a lot of special events too we were getting because we were not, not only part of the package but just you know in the fan club too so we were getting the emails and they were like yeah metallic is essentially going to take over the city for like four days um so there's going to be all this stuff going on so they were doing like um ross halflin if he he's a really famous like concert photographer okay um and he's shot a lot of metallica throughout the years so like he's got a new book uh, all black and white images of that he's taken of metallica over the years Ooh. and he was doing like a book signing and metallica's got their own uh line of whiskey called blackened um so there was a uh, they were doing um a we went to a restaurant um out on the water uh called atwater tavern and they were doing uh a special uh kind of uh drink menu yeah so we went for brunch because shanti and i had celebrated we'd had our um wedding anniversary uh like a week and a half before okay. and we knew we were doing this we were knew we were doing this trip so we just held off doing any sort of like big celebration we're yeah. like we'll treat ourselves to a really nice meal uh, so we went and did brunch, but they had this special cocktail menu using 
Metallica's Black oh. and Whiskey. What'd you get? Um, um, I had a, essentially an Arnold Palmer. Yeah. With whiskey in it. And okay. then uh, Chauncey got, it's not an Irish car bomb, okay. but it's whatever the equivalent of that is. Okay. Uh, but with this instead. Um, so that was really cool. And we got, we got this really nice charcuterie board full of meat and cheese as our appetizer. He got Ooh. steak. I got, it was brunch. So I got breakfast food because I'm always a sucker for breakfast food. Sure. Yeah. Um, and one of the coolest things was Metallica has their own um, not-for-profit called All Within My Hands, the All Within My Hands Foundation, which All Within My Hands is a song off of St. Anger. And for the most part, what they do is um, they will do, they go to like soup kitchens and food pantries. They will do an annual day of service um, all over the country and fans could sign up. And Chauncey did this a couple of years ago and went and volunteered at a local food pantry and they sorted all the stuff like canned goods over here, stuff in boxes over here, you know, making sure stuff's not past its expiration date and that sort of thing. And then when Metallica is on tour, sometimes it will stop at a local food pantry in that city and uh, drop off a big check, <laughs> uh -huh. um, that sort of thing. So with this, uh, they were like, okay, well, we'll all of them in hands, we're going to team up with the city of San Francisco and we're going to do a volunteer day at a local food pantry and unfortunately okay. it was the exact same time we were gonna we already had our spider-man tickets okay <laughs> so uh -oh. we had we had to miss out on that they offered a second opportunity to team up with um i forget the name of the organization now um but we went out to the beach just south of the golden gate bridge okay and did a beach cleanup essentially ah. so they gave us they gave us the you know not the the poker things with like you sometimes see yeah. uh with people on the side of the road it said they gave us the the gripper things that where you pull the trigger oh, yeah, and sure. the little fingers and big old trash bags and reflective vests and stuff and they put us in teams uh and groups and like some of you go that way some of you go that way and we'll all meet back up in the middle when we're done and uh i don't know how many people were actually there probably a couple hundred uh -huh. um and they sent us actually an email uh after the fact and they said that we picked up like a thousand pounds worth of trash wow in the couple of hours that we were there um so that was that was really cool we got a, a t-shirt out of it um which uh, by the time we got there unfortunately they only had like extra large and extra extra large okay <laughs> Which is fine for my husband, me not so much. I've worn yeah. mine a couple of times, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do some alterations so it fits a little better. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure with your cosplay, uh, yes. you are used to doing sewing. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. And if nothing else, it's a good sleep shirt. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, but that was re that was really cool to be so you know there with a bunch of Metallica fans and running into you know seeing people out on the street and obviously in the hotel there was yeah pretty much all metallica fans uh there at the hotel so like uh when we were uh getting it we were getting ready to leave to go the first night and there was a bunch of us in the elevator and of course we're all wearing our metallica shirts yeah. and everything and one of the people in the elevator is like hey what's going on tonight i'm like ah, i don't know some little concert at a coffee shop i think yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> you know it was just a lot of just like sup you know we're just metallic fan metallic fan hey yeah. how you doing and then after the show we were like oh my god you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was it was just really cool to kind of be in the city that we were already familiar with but then yeah. so kind of also surrounded by fellow fans you know we were all there for the same same reason which is really cool so one i love san francisco i was i've been able to go i was able to go a couple of times when i worked uh i worked for a company called bank tech and aspect was our phone system and they had a couple of conventions like their user conferences in san francisco and lynn and i would always fly out early because back then if you had a saturday stay over the airfare would be 
tons cheaper. So mm -hmm. the company would like, hey, yeah, if you're willing to go out early, we'll pay for the hotel, you know, for the Saturday night stay. And so Lynn and I would go and, and we just love the city. It's it's just, we called it, it's New Orleans, but doesn't smell as bad. <laughs> <laughs> No, I've me. never I've never been to New Orleans yet. Yes. But uh yeah, San Francisco is definitely I mean it's a great city as far as culture is concerned. Yes. You know, it's definitely a melting pot. It was yeah. uh after we did the beach clean up, we spent the afternoon in Japantown, mm -hmm. which was really cool. We got to have you know authentic Japanese food. Yeah. Um at one of the restaurants and go into the little shops and yeah and everything and try some Japanese snacks. And I you know I got to shop at a Daiso for the first time, oh, which I've nice. always heard about uh from people like you know I've watched on uh the, you know on YouTube and stuff who've actually gone to Japan. They're like, yeah, this is Daiso. It's like you know like the Dollar Tree yeah. uh, of Japan. And I was like, well, you know, if I ever get to Japan, but in Japantown, they have one. And you know, oh, nice. it was everything I thought it would be. I bought a lot of Japanese snacks. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> one of the things that I love is, um, I don't know if you've ever gone to Dragon Con. No, I'm not. So, okay. So Dragon Con is the convention that happens during the Labor Day weekend in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, yeah. I know and, of it. I've just yeah. never been to it they take over the city mm -hmm. um you know the same thing as you're talking there's the banners and what's fun is it kicks off like thursday night you'll start doing um badge pickup and then friday things will officially start about one o'clock so if you're there on friday and and it's in downtown atlanta you will see a Klingon walking next to a guy in a business suit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, because it's, it's, it's a regular work day for other people, you know, and uh, they go out of their way to embrace that they know that the people coming to Dragon Con are bringing a lot of money to the city. They embrace the culture. A few years ago, Rachel, there was there usually is a couple of big college football games that same weekend. In mm -hmm. other words, so there'll be uh, all kinds of like, there'll be like four different colleges all coming because they're going to have two different games. I was staying at a Holiday Inn Express and I woke up, you know, and I went to go get the free breakfast and there's people in all their LSU gear, you know, mm -hmm. and then there's all the people in their cosplay <laughs> and, uh, um, my friend Tom Zoller uh, is now goes to Dragon Con every year he can uh, to host a booth. But the first time he went, he said, and, and Tom goes to before COVID, a, a different comic convention every week, every weekend, mm -hmm. yeah, every, every once a month, at least. He does probably 14 to 16 conventions a year. And oh, he said, that amazing. I know, <laughs> Dragon Con, he says, is the only one where he feels guilty he's not dressing up. <laughs> uh, as for, as a cosplay, it is the Mecca. I mean, I've seen the DC mm -hmm. um, old school Blackhawks people. They had a um, <clears throat> uh, just obscure characters that, you know, you're like, that's, that's, that's how Jordan's nephew airwave. Someone's dressed <laughs> up as that. Oh my goodness. So it, it's, it's always a lot of fun. So, so I love the idea that, you know, the city kind of embraced that, Hey, let's celebrate this you know, anniversary and, and let's have fun. Mm -hmm. um, did, uh, did you go to both shows? Oh yeah. 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 Uh, the nice Dumb thing question, with our, Jesse. yeah, they're, they're, uh, <laughs> the nice thing with our package is it included tickets to both shows in the exact same seats. Oh, nice. So we had the exact same seats for, for both shows. Um, and our seats are pretty good too. So oh, good. Uh, slightly higher than where we sat for uh, the second night of S and M two, but still yeah. pretty good vantage point. Yeah. Um. So that was that was really cool to be able to 
know exactly where we were going to be the second night, know what it was going to look like, at least as far as the vantage point was concerned. Yeah. So I'm sure the band knew that there would be multiple people there both nights, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I would, you probably told me this in our first episode, but are they a band that changes their set list every week? When, you know, every show when they're touring or do they have it pretty set? And that's, you know, if you go in Nashville and then if you end up going in Atlanta or going to Seattle, you're going to get mostly the same set list. If they're on tour, for the most part, there are, you know, if they do a show that's, you know, a couple hours long, so you're looking at you know 15 16 songs um which you know for a couple hours doesn't necessarily seem like a lot you know two plus hours two three hours yeah like 16 songs doesn't seem like a lot when you have somebody like paul mccartney who can knock out like 30 songs in like three hours but you also gotta remember a lot of the beatles songs early on were like two minutes under yeah yeah. where metallica's got songs that will run for seven eight nine yeah. minutes <laughs> yeah. just for one song uh so yeah. it's not quantity of song it's the quality exactly. of the song um so yeah for the most part you would probably i could probably say yeah if you were what if you went to multiple shows of the same tour at least 50 percent of the set list would probably be the same because they're going to have their songs that people expect to hear you know your master of puppets yeah. your enter sandmans and the like yeah um for this we really had no idea what to expect all they were saying was expect surprises nice um and there that was definitely the case what was really cool is both shows were different set lists mm-hmm. so what they did is the first show they did um at least one song from each one of their studio albums yeah in sequential order of the album's release nice. so night number one they started with the very beginning with their first album kill them all mm. and then went sequentially through and um yeah they did do some obvious ones um that you would expect to hear like they did one from injustice for all mm-hmm. uh sad but true from the black album that when you hear quite a bit nothing else matters from the black album yeah um but they definitely were like expect some deep cuts and mm-hmm. for as long as i have been more into the metallica fandom um which you know, is now going on, you know, I finally kind of really converted in like 2017. <laughs> yes. So, you know, going on almost five years now, it'll be five years this summer. Um, being on things like Reddit and Twitter and the Facebook page, you know, Facebook and the social media, anywhere there's Metallica fans for the longest time. And according to Chauncey, it's been this way for even longer. It's really been this way since this album was released. If you were to ask Metallica fans, what is the one song you want to hear live that they have never done? You will almost get the same answer from almost everybody. And that is the song Fixer which is on reload it's the last track on the reload album okay and it's the set i've seen it everywhere on reddit and everywhere people are like play fixer play fixer i want to hear fixer do the dang song fixer so going into this you know the reddit is constantly posts of people like well what do you think they're going to play at the 40th anniversary and people like they better play fixer if they don't play anything else play fixer so what do they do night one fixer (laughs) and it is so wild like i mentioned on the last time i was on for whatever reason when they do master of puppets when that song starts the the audience just loses their freaking mind i don't know what it is about this song but they just absolutely lose it that 
that losing it to master puppets does not hold a candle to the reaction to people when they realized that they were doing fix <laughs> cuz they, they were doing a lot of uh in between like they always do like graphics and stuff on sure. the screens um but they were doing a lot of like graphics and like video packages in between songs sometimes yeah. it was uh you know if they're doing something from the early days so we'd be showing like mon you know like uh montages of like photos of their early days yeah you know when the guys were like you know super young <laughs> um and so uh the 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 sound started with this video package but then fixer has a very unique open okay it's a very unique sound you go and listen to it it's very unique it's it's obvious what this song is when it starts so when that opener started the people around me i thought that their heads were going to explode like the aliens in mars attacks right yes people were crying they were so excited because they were finally playing fixer because this song has never been played live ever so i was yeah i i was gonna just say i i i went to as you were talking i went to set lift fm right yeah set list wiki and you know and they show like um you know for whom the bell tolls has been paid 1546 mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. fight fire with fire 343 and between mm -hmm. those two fixer one one <laughs> yes and it will likely never happen again <coughs> um is like, the is the thing because hate uh, train uh, is one else that according to this is that very seldom been played you know yeah that's hilarious um i remember i was at a uh a dallas show not a springsteen show just kind of a little festival show that they were playing a um madison king who is a local singer songwriter that lynn and i really liked and we were um so we were you know kind of enjoying that and all of a sudden my phone on twitter started um kind of blowing up I'm like what what what's going on right and um and i he was at a show and i can't remember now where it was but bruce was playing and he played um i span which candidly i'm not a great fan of that song but it was it, it was absolutely people were going crazy because it was from it's an unreleased track that was on you know and uh he had not played that in years no one had ever thought he would and mm -hmm. just he started the just because he had a wild hair up his butt and just started this, you know, and so, mm -hmm. uh, so I know, in fact, one of the questions, I, I don't remember if I asked you this when you were on, but I asked every Bruce show, what are songs you're still chasing? What are songs mm -hmm. that you have not heard live that you wanted to hear? And uh, that's, that's amazing. That, that is the ultimate fanboy yeah. white whale. And you know, and what's really cool is even though, you, you know, obviously the Chase Center can only hold so many people. Uh, so uh, there was only going to be so many people at the show. Yeah. Uh, especially with the COVID restrictions because of everything, right. um, which I have to say, you know, if somebody was like, you know, we're in the middle, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. You went all the way to San Francisco and went to a rock concert where you were stuck inside a building for two nights around all these people. The thing is, is that, like the city of San Francisco was very, very adamant about restrictions. Like you had, you needed to wear a mask everywhere and you couldn't really go into anywhere without showing proof of vaccination so like every restaurant we went to we had to show a proof of vaccination we had to show it before we went to the movie theater same thing for the chase center you had to be vaccinated there was no recently got a negative covid test yeah. to get in you had to be vaccinated and wearing a mask so if i was going to go anywhere during a pandemic it'd be 
inside a building with 20,000 people for two nights, this was probably the best scenario because I knew everybody there was vaccinated. Yeah. So when we went, um, you know, just in one of those, it only makes sense if you're a music fan. Mm -hmm. uh, James Taylor and Jackson Brown were touring mm -hmm. and they were going to be in Fort Worth. Um, and their tickets were just, there were no decent tickets available, you know, so they were going, you know, three, $400 a ticket. And I'm like, ah, mm -hmm. I'm not that big of a fan. I don't know, you know, and then, so, but I looked and New Orleans um, had plenty of great seats, you know, at just regular price. And so I said, hey, Linda, do you want to go to New Orleans to go to this show? So we ended up spending, you know, a couple thousand dollars because we didn't want to pay $700 for concert tickets. <laughs> But, you know, we flew to New Orleans, we made a long weekend out of it, um, and we were so impressed because, you know, living here in Texas, where we have a governor that is against mask mandates, or he's, mm -hmm. yeah, he's against mandates, um, and that's not here or there for you and I to discuss, though I disagree with it, but New Orleans everywhere demanded that we had a mask on. Like when we walked mm -hmm. into a cab, the driver said, can you please pull up your mask? Oh yeah, sure. And then, um, and we had to like to go into a restaurant, we had to show them our vaccination. As you said, not a negative test. We had to show a vaccination card. Mm -hmm. um, and they said they were gonna do that in Dallas when we went and saw the Eagles. But the reality is Rachel and my audience can't see this, but like if you flashed a piece of paper, they waved, right? Mm -hmm. No, in New Orleans, they went dates, dates. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can go. Now yeah. they had- and We had to show like a form of ID too to show yeah. that it matched the, yeah. the vaccination card. Yeah, and so <laughs> I, you know, and like when we went into a bar mm -hmm. before they asked, you know, they, they asked and Linda, told multiple people thank you so much this is so good to see and mm -hmm. this really nice bartender was telling her he says we can't afford it this city will die if we have another mm -hmm. if we have to shut down again so we're all doing this mm -hmm. um and the least there was a little hole in the wall we went in for breakfast and they because there was like two people, someone cooking and someone bringing the food, they had a list and you had to write your name down and put the date you were vaccinated. So they kind of, you could have fudged that, but mm -hmm. everywhere else. So I, I'm, that's, that's great to hear. Um, yeah. Now they only played Fixer the one night. They didn't play it both nights. No, no. The set list on night two is, was completely different. Um, it, what I was trying to get to before I, no, 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 brain, I'm, I'm my, it. my brain veered off. No, no, um, no, you're good. Was, um, because, uh, you know, obviously that's, uh, it's a lot. There are fans that are, are I, you know, cause this is international fans. I know there are some countries that are struggling to get the vaccine. So there were some fans that couldn't go, not because they, refuse to get vaccinated because they live someplace where they just have, don't have the vaccine yet. Right. And then unfortunately there were other countries where they were starting to shut down the borders again. So they right. couldn't leave even if they wanted to. Um, so, and Metallica recognized that. So what they did is they live streamed both shows. Oh, nice. So um, the fans could watch live uh, I, I haven't seen the stream so i don't know exactly like when they cut to like the little video things if that was you know edited in so they could see it properly um yeah. but they at least got to see the the actual songs performed and as soon as fixer started I know this is horrible. It's like you know it's a once in a lifetime concert but I just had to open Reddit to see the Metallica Reddit, to see people's reactions yes. <laughs> in real time. And it was so wild. I mean, I only have my phone open for you know a couple of yeah. seconds, just long enough to be like, you know, every post is like, oh my God, they're playing Fixer, Fixer for, you know, it's like 
fixer with five million explanation points. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is exactly the reaction I expected from it. But it was so wild just to see the, you know, the fan reaction, not from just the people there, but the fans who were able to experience it because they were doing the live stream, because they recognized the situation that the world is currently in, that they didn't want, this was such an important event for not only the band, but the fans, because obviously without the fans, the band would not have lasted for 40 years. Yes. Um, that they wanted to get give them at least some of the experience even if they couldn't be in san francisco to be there live be surrounded by their fellow friends be able to experience the other events and stuff that were happening they could at least watch the shows and see and hear the set list instead of having to hear about it secondhand or wait until metallica started putting the the songs on their youtube channel which they're just now starting to do uh <laughs> There's like three yeah. <laughs> up on the up on the YouTube channel. One of them is Fixer, though, so you can go and watch the Fixer performance, and you can hear the audience reaction when they recognize what song it is. And even just through the YouTube video, it's wild to hear. Um, but what they did for night two is yes. they essentially did the same thing in reverse. So they started with a song from their most recent album, Hardwired to Self-Destruct, and then went backwards chronologically through their catalog. Um, and again, there wasn't really anything as deep as Fixer. Um, I don't think there was anything that was a first time. Yeah, there wasn't anything that was a first time ever. There was a lot of things that they have not done in like a decade or so. Yeah. Um, which is still exciting. Um, so, um, you know, they did. Um, I thought was kind of cool was um, to to help, you know, fl flush out the, the set list. Like I said, they did at least one song from every studio album. <laughs> But they also did yeah. uh, an album of covers way back in the day called Garage Inc. And so they did a, they did a cover each night, which I was completely lost on because they're from bands that I don't even know. Um, the first night was a song as uh, Red Red Fan, I think. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not i'm not entirely sure um yeah. and um and then the the second night was a, a diamond head cover Ooh. um so <clears throat> it, but they also did the first night they did uh my white whale which i've I talked about on my last yeah uh appearance um no leaf clover they did do that the first night. It's not quite the same without the full orchestra, but yeah. I was still very excited to hear it because I never thought I was going to see it live again. I thought it would, you know, it was really just going to be an SM2 thing mm. and that would be it. Um, but then they did um I Disappear, which is a Metallica song, but it's not for one of their studio albums. It's from the Mission Impossible 2 soundtrack. Okay. Which wow. I thought was kind of cool yeah did. Um, and they and they did more of the 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 ones you would expect night to yeah um because after you do fixer it's like you really can't go anywhere else as far as yeah. deep cuts are concerned so they did things like master of puppets enter sandman the unforgiven um they did the memory remains um which is one they do somewhat often from also from reload uh what's fun with memory remains just like for the snm2 show lars ulrich is a troll and uh if you know the song memory remains there's an opportunity for the audience to sing along it's just a not you know na 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 yeah. type thing very right. much like the beatles hey jude um oh, good but what lars did both for SM2 and this is when we get to the audience just doing the na 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 stuff. 
he will start conducting the audience. Oh, really? And stretch us out doing the na 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 thing. So, um, I don't know the timing for the fortieth, but I, I, because yeah. I was there, um, I was there for both. But for S and M two, he managed to stretch out the na 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 bits for like two minutes. Oh, how fun! Which is way longer than the way it is on the album. Yeah. <laughs> so he ended up doing the same thing for the the 40th where Lars is just all like I'm gonna stand up for my drum kit and just be like you know conducting and like no keep going and you just could kind of see you know the other guys like okay can we move on to the next song but Lars is such a troll that he's like no keep singing you know <laughs> till eventually somebody's like okay we're done <laughs> yeah no that's that's perfect that's you know there's I love when a band has having fun live. And um, so was there was there any duplication at all between both nope. shows? Wow. Absolutely nothing. Nope. Yeah, other than the opening, which is not Metallica playing anything because they always start their shows with um, ACDCs. It's a long way to the top. Yeah. Just plays over the PA system. Um, and then they come out to... The Ecstasy of Gold, um, which is a, a Marconi song from one of the spaghetti westerns. I can't remember which yeah. one, one of the Clint Eastwood ones. Um, and this time when they came out, they were showing like, again, clips and photos and stuff. And they had s- narration to go with it unfortunately because of the crowd you can't really hear it i kind of hope they put that up eventually so you can actually hear what they're saying um that was the it was the same narration both nights but it was a different narrator the first night it was jason momoa oh narrating the video um and then the second night it was tom morello i don't know who that is yeah Uh, um, so Tom Morella is Rage Against the Machine. Ah, uh, okay. And he also, um, there's a Springsteen connection. When Little Steven was filming uh, Lilyhammer, the series that was one of the first direct series in Netflix, um, he played a uh, mafia, mafia boss that got witness protection, and he had been watching the Lilyhammer olympics you know the winter olympics mm-hmm. and so he's like oh that's where i want to go and so they end up sitting him and then he realizes um that you know it's this desolate place so it's a fish out of water it's a fun series oh. but anyway so they 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 asked tom morella to join the East street band for a tour uh because he had at one time played a song ghost of tom jode with bruce on stage so yeah he's a very very well-known guitarist um Mm. and like i said so that's 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 a pretty big deal him narrating that that's that's fun it's uh when kiss was in the rock and roll hall of fame tom morello is the one who um introduced them Mm -hmm. so yeah wow okay wow that that sounds like just a once in a lifetime just experience all the way around oh yeah yeah absolutely it was very very wild you know going in not knowing what to expect they had done uh when they had their 30th anniversary they'd done a a show at i can't remember the name of the venue but it was like a club um Mm -hmm. it wasn't the you know big basketball stadium type thing and that was more like having fun having surprise people show up um yeah so you know people weren't sure if this was going to be similar or completely different and i know some people were kind of hoping that maybe like like jason newstead may show up at some point and you know start jamming out with the guys and i I, you know that would have been cool um yeah especially considering they did the uh the uh, the for the celebration of the black album um yeah. they did the the release where they just have a bunch of their you know fellow 
music artists do covers so like Miley right. Cyrus is on there doing a, a cover of nothing else matters and stuff and I was like yeah I mean they may have thought about you know having fellow artists show up and uh-huh. you know jam out for a song or something if we weren't under a pandemic and also if it wasn't the week before Christmas where yeah. a lot of people are already going to be on vacation spending time with their families yeah. um but I really think for I th- really think that they were like no that I think I you know they've never said this but my assumption is we did kind of the surprise special guest just kind of club atmosphere version for the thirtieth this time we want to do we want to celebrate our catalog and play some stuff for the diehard fans yes and really give the fans. An experience they will never forget because like i said yeah. you don't last for 40 years as a band no. without the fans exactly <laughs> so this was their opportunity to be like yeah we're gonna play some of the stuff that you do expect you know like you, you can't do two shows and not do enter sandman right at least once it was really weird for it not to be the end of the show <laughs> because in my mind you hear entertainment start and start so it's like oh the show is over this is the last song no in this case it was smack dab in the middle of night too uh so there's still a lot of show to go um but to also do things like fixer which has never been done and probably never will be done before um because you could tell james was struggling (laughs) it's not in a key that he sings in anymore you know as his as he's gotten older you know the voice changes and sometimes Uh you know you can still sing but you can't necessarily sing in the same key and i'm guessing they probably weren't going to go through the hassle of like re doing the entire song in a different key just for one performance i'm sure james is like no i can do it you know if you know i know how he's like i'm smart enough to you know adjust my vocals if i know there's a note i can't hit i'm making a lot of assumptions here um and uh because even james after they finished the song he's like he's like even after 40 years there's there's a first we've never done that one and we probably yeah. never will again <laughs> you know um there is i was at a show in it was in houston and uh 2016 i believe um and there was a sign request um for the song one step up from tunnel of love and um and the guy said you know has not been played with the e street band since like 87 or 88 you know whatever it was uh, right after tunnel love came out and um and so Bruce got the sign and for a while when he was touring, he, they would have certain wild card, you know, slots on the set list where they would pick a sign from the audience and do that song. And uh, if you tour it, if you, uh, if you Google it, you can see, he says, um, we do not know this one. <laughs> <laughs> you have made your bed, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and it is it starts out with just him singing and you'll hear him band come in softly you know and they play so uh that was just pretty nice but i love his candid like we do not know this one (laughs) you have made your bed sir so yeah i can imagine that's oh that sounds such a great great experience Mm -hmm. um wow i you know do you think they're i mean they streamed it do you think they're going to um maybe do they put out you know blu-rays or dvds of their shows do you think that'll come out in general they don't they did for s and m too yeah um which was really cool i mean they 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 were fully prepared to film that in a way that it could be released on yeah. on dvd or blu-ray and we have it and you know have watched it and have, have yeah. found ourselves actually in the audience uh nice <laughs> which is really cool uh, well you find chauncey unfortunately i'm quite a bit shorter so yes, yes. like the top of my head but i'm like i'm there I that's swear, it right that's me to- yeah 
Uh, thankfully, Chauncey's tall enough that he stands out. Oh, that's neat. Um, this they didn't they didn't have like cameras and stuff like they did for SNF two. That doesn't mean that they couldn't release it. Yeah. Um, considering they've released the way they've started to release the songs on YouTube, mm-hmm. there's enough care. Uh, you know camera angles that they could probably put something together um i'm yeah that would be really cool if they release it Mm -hmm. Uh, at this point i'm waiting for them to release the album Mm -hmm. more than anything uh so to be able to listen to it again which i think they will do and i'm sure it'll probably end up being a double album nice Um, because it's uh it's you know two yeah. nights uh so um although i guess i could fit it all on one these days i don't know uh no i mean you know you would you would think they would do i would think a, it would be two that way you could have one for each night yeah um, i would think so and then as you opposed know, to yeah the SM2 sure, where it's all the same i'm sure the marketing people will do you know because vinyl is back hot so yes. they'll have a special deluxe vinyl set that has, you know, the shows and extras. And so probably, just, yeah, because yeah. they've been releasing the they've been doing these big box sets. Yes. Um, for when they hit anniversary. So they did that for the Black Album, where it's this big box set and it's on vinyl. But then there's yeah. also the like remastered on CD and then there's some DVDs and there's a book and there's all sorts of yeah. accoutrement with it. And then. Uh, so we got that and then Chauncey had also got the one for Injustice for All that they did a couple of years ago. Um, and then I just actually got the email from Metallica saying they're asking, reaching out to fans for things like um, concert photos, scans of tickets uh, for the yeah. load and reload era, because that's going to be the next box set. OK, so good. I, it's probably only a matter of time before they take all the the stuff and probably release it in some form or fashion but it it may take a while it was the same way with s m too where we were all itching you know as soon as we got back from san francisco like okay we need the album we need the album so yes. we can relive this over and yes, over and over absolutely. again and it, yeah the album wasn't released for like i don't know like six months or something yeah, exactly. like that which is so. actually a short amount of time but but it feels like you know forever it feels like forever you know yeah. at this point it hasn't even been two months since yes. the shows and i'm over here like give me give me give, give, me. give me yes <laughs> so i can uh, relive this because odds are we're not going to go see metallica again anytime soon no. uh, yeah it's been fun it's also been very expensive um and you know after doing snm2 and this it's like you know unless they come through indianapolis where they're literally you know almost literally in our backyard yeah we're probably not going to go out of our way to see them again there's other artists that we have not seen in a while yeah um that some we know are on tour like weird al he's yeah he'll be coming through indiana a few times actually a couple different locations uh later this year and then i'm waiting desperately for paul mccartney to go back on tour in the united states because yeah. i've not seen him since 2013 yeah so i really want to go see paul again <laughs> well i feel your pain um bruce is um They've never officially, they had never officially announced that there would be a tour in 2022. So therefore they can't officially announce that there isn't a tour, but the, Mm -hmm. the, the scuttlebutt is that they've, you know, that whatever tour dates they had booked, they've released and are planning to now then try to do 2023. And, Mm -hmm. and you understand why, I mean, um, you have one, you know, there is a COVID protocol officer on every film set, every TV set. And I was listening to a podcaster talk about it, that it is not unusual for them to come up and say, okay, blank has been tested positive. They now need to be in quarantine for five days. And so what do you do if, you know, Max, your drummer for the E Street Band, well, he's positive. Okay, mm-hmm. we go out without a drummer. You know, I mean, just that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and and the reality is, I, I just want 
these artists that I admire and love to be safe. Yeah. So uh, we'll get through it. I am hoping for a pay-per-view. I, I would love that. Uh, I don't know if you've ever watched the film Western Stars from Springsteen, but there, um, that was an album he put out a few years ago, and he got together a band and they played at his barn. He has this mm-hmm. amazing barn at his property, and uh, it's worth the film just to watch the barn. The songs are great too, but just seeing this old, you know, that like he says they've done weddings, they've done receptions there, they've done this thing. So, you know, we're uh, part of us are like, you're like, just, just grab the E Street band and do a set from your barn, even two hours, just, just do mm-hmm. a two hour set. We'll pay it. Rachel, this was so great. I, I love hearing these stories. I love your passion. Uh, this sounds like an amazing weekend. It was, it absolutely was. That's so good. Uh, what do you got going up? Uh, what do you got coming up on your different podcasts? Uh, well, the five-ish fangirls, which you can find pretty much wherever you find podcasts. Yes. Um, and at the five-ish fangirls.com. Uh, we're just uh, bouncing around like we normally do. Uh, doing, uh, you know, movies uh that we have seen some movies that we haven't seen uh you know the thankfully the internet is a thing and so it's streaming um and then we're also all waiting to see how book of boba fett pans out (laughs) for the final episode because it's been really really good so once the season wraps up with that we can talk about that um and then we're also uh segueing into gold standard the oscars podcast we're also working behind the scenes along with nick zan and uh, a few other folks for uh for people that have listened to the five ish fan girls long enough uh for a couple of years we were doing a <clears throat> academy award uh competition with another podcast yeah to see who could predict the most winners oh, well, that'd be fun. Uh, so we, we did that two years in a row we won the first year we lost the second okay um and uh because of the pandemic we set that aside uh but now we we are um bringing that back with a slightly different set of contenders okay. but still kind of the same idea so academy award nominations are actually going to as we're recording this going to be announced this tuesday okay um so once we have the, the list of nominees our respective teams can start figuring out their predictions so when the award ceremony rolls around at the end of march we can see which team comes out of the winner um so that should be fun that should be a um, lot of fun especially now after doing gold standard uh yeah. for you know almost two years now and getting kind of a good idea of how the academy thinks although there are some years where you're like what was the academy thinking i think they weren't yeah. uh <laughs> um and then gold standard obviously we're we're still trucking along where we uh started the 1970s we just did uh Patton mm-hmm. is our most recent release as we're recording this so but you um, guys you have some good ones to talk about i was reaching out to nick to saying hey if you end up having someone um can't make it i'd love to fill in to talk about you know some of those i'm set yeah. to do ordinary people with you guys Uh, which will be an interesting year because you know raging bull came out the same year and you know ordinary people beat raging bull so i'm sure we will have a discussion on that uh so that'll be fun i i can't wait to hear you guys talk about the godfathers and rocky and i mean there's some really yeah the 70s is definitely once you get out of that postcode era yeah and it takes a couple of years for Hollywood to be like, really, we can do whatever we want. Yes. Really? Yeah. Uh, Cause we have like that weird where it's like, uh, you know, we still got some of the Hollywood musicals that are still trying yeah. to hang on, but then we go from like Oliver wins in 68 to midnight cowboy. Yeah. 
wins the following year and talk it's about like like a whiplash right yeah really so hollywood is like oh really we can do anything we want yes yeah <laughs> and you know there's not going to be you really are only catering to the public opinion as opposed to some you know exactly yes group um, of people right <laughs> uh if someone wants to reach you how can they um i can be found my personal social media stuff is all linked on the five ish fangirls okay. website there's an about us page that's okay. got all of us individually and then of course gold standard uh nick handles pretty much all of that but uh, gold okay. standard could also be found wherever you find podcasts and on facebook so. well my friend this was a blast thank you so much uh we will have to find another excuse to have you join uh, because I always love visiting with you. This is always just a blast. Listeners, you go get vaccinated, get boosted, stay safe. Let's all be good to each other because that's how we're going to get through it. And thank you, Rachel. Thank you, listeners. Mm -hmm. We'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. Doing a podcast at times can be a one-way conversation, and I hate that. So please let me know what you like and don't like about the work I'm doing. You can reach the podcast via email at setlustingbruce at gmail.com. The show is on Twitter at setlustingbruce, and my personal Twitter is at Jesse Jackson DFW. We have a website, www.setlustingbruce.com. From there, you can find links to other Springsteen podcasts as well as other music themed podcasts. We have a page devoted to our own SLB All Star Band. These are guests who have been on the podcast more than three times. There is a link to our store where you can purchase Set Lessing Bruce shirts, as well as a Mary Question t-shirt. There is a link to our Patreon page where you can sign up to help support the podcast financially. We have different levels and different rewards based on your support. If you don't have any extra cash, and right now who does, you can support the podcast by subscribing via your favorite podcast player and leaving us a review. The more reviews we have, the easier it is for people to find us. And please tell a friend about the podcast, especially if they love Bruce or music, because it will make a difference. You just heard the fun talking, hard rocking, music loving, album ranking, fan thinking, joy spreading, lyric reading, story sharing podcast that is the one, the only. That listening Bruce. The theme for Set Lessing Bruce was written by David Rosen, used by permission.